Hey, welcome to Cheaper Cheaper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about the construction of the portable Chinese diesel heater. And in our tip segment, we're going to talk about some safety tips and some money saving tips as well. So stick around. Okay, when you look at all the pieces, it could be daunting, but what we'll do is we'll just start assembling it from the case and work our way into the internals. So for starters, you could pick what case you want to use. Now I chose this case and you may have a different case at home, so you wouldn't want to follow the exact measurements that I did with this case, but all the steps would be the same. So follow along and perhaps you may want to do this yourself on a case that you have or that you purchase. I know um, I've been considering using the case up here, the DeWalt case, but I'll get started with this and we'll see how it goes. Okay, once you've determined what box you're going to use, in my case, I want to mount the tank on the outside of the box. If you use a bigger box, you'd be mounting it on the inside. However, in this case, this tank is going to be mounted through these holes and bolted to the wall of the box. So I'll just position it here, make sure everything's nice and square, and then I would mark where these three holes are of the tank onto the box, and then I would drill a hole through the box with a wide enough diameter so that the fasteners I use can secure the tank to the box. Also, my plan is to run the fuel nipple from the tank into the box from behind the tank into the box so you won't have any lines sticking out to get caught on things. So that's the advantage. Um, I was considering perhaps bringing the fuel line in from the top because that would eliminate possibilities of any leaking, but I didn't have that piece of equipment and so I just decided I'll try this route and I'll do my best to secure the fuel nipple into the tank to avoid any leaks. So once I decide where I want the hole, I would put the hole into the gas tank to the diameter of the fuel nipple. And what you'll find is inside the tank in a little plastic bag will be the fuel nipple here and I'll just show you right there. Let me see. So you see the fuel nipple with the rubber O-ring and then there's a, uh, that, that nipple will go through the tank, then you would fit that rubber O-ring on it and then secure it with this nut and that would make sure that the fuel would come in to this end of the nipple and then you'd have this fitting on the inside of the box to connect your fuel line. So let's see how you can manage to put this on the inside of the tank with it coming out into the box. So I will have made a hole in the box about an inch and a half or so where the fuel nipple from the tank will go into the box and then I've lined the hole with foil tape just to protect it. And then for this nipple, I needed to use a 5 16 bit to make the hole in the tank. And I would locate that hole by lining up the tank behind the box, opening the box, and with a marker, just mark the opening onto the tank so you know where to drill your 332nd hole. Now how do you get this fitting and fuel nipple through the hole down there? Well I've seen it done a few ways online. Some people use a string, other people have used a wire. I'll demonstrate with a wire. So be careful that you don't misplace the fuel nipple and those two washers and the nut. So you take this wire and then 
feed it into the hole that you just drilled and direct it towards the cap. So once you have the wire out of the cap portion of the tank, you put the nipple on the wire with the nipple part down and the white part up. And then just kink the bottom of the wire so that the nipple doesn't slide off. And then you just pull it through the tank. Like that, it just comes right out of the hole. And then the thread is a little tight, but it just comes through. Then you can just pull the wire out and that's it. So the next stage of the process is to take the bolt with the rubber washer and secure it onto the nipple and then screw it down. And then it'll be tricky because the nipple will want to spin on you. So you'll have to use a pair of pliers to hold the nipple and a small wrench to tighten the bolt. So I'll do that now. So this is a small half inch wrench that I have and I just use this pair of pliers just to hold the nipple. So there you have it. The fuel nipple is secured tightly to the tank and there's a rubber seal on this side of the bolt and the tank and then on the other side as well. So the next step, we could just feed the nipple into the hole that we drilled and then mark these three locations and then secure the tank to the box. So with that being done, and with marking the three holes to mount the tank to the box, we're done with the tank for now. But we will easily be able to assemble and attach it later on. The next stage, we're going to locate where the heater will go in the box. Now if you recall, in the last video where we looked at the design of the box, we discussed how the heater will be mounted inside the box and the fresh air will be coming in through two vents, one across the top and one across the bottom, and then the hot air would blow out the side. So what I've done is I have fitted the heater to the box. Now there's a hinge on this side, so I had to kind of reverse the design instead of having the heat come out this side, it's coming out of this side, which isn't a problem. You'll see as I mount the heater that it won't be a problem. and then. I, I drilled a three inch hole right here for the heater and I'll talk about the exhaust hole shortly and basically I had a two inch hole cutter um, but I didn't have a three inch hole cutter so I traced the three inch hole and I ended up using a jigsaw to cut the hole and I used a Dremel tool just to smooth it out and then I used foil tape around the edge of the hole just to protect the box. So if we look inside the box, we can see there's the hole where the fuel nipple is going to come in. And then there's the three inch hole where I'm going to have the heater hot air venting out. And that's where I'm going to have the exhaust and we'll talk about the, the specifics about that shortly. Now, here is the heater. And there is the mounting plate that I have already bolted onto the bottom of the heater. And what I had to do, I had to use a grinding tool to cut a half of inch, half an inch off this side of the mounting plate and another half inch off the other side so it would fit in the box because 
If I left the mounting plate whole, I wouldn't have been able to close the box. So having done that, I used these L brackets Now you could use any L now you could use any L bracket that you want to use or any kind of bracket system that you come up with. These I got off of Amazon and I'll put a link in the description so you could see. And um, the package came with four, but three fit on the bottom of the heater. Let me show you. So here's the bottom of the heater and this is going to be where the air intake comes in and the fuel line comes in and that's where the exhaust goes out and I was able to fit three of these very sturdy stainless steel brackets to the bottom of the mounting plate. I just drilled holes to connect these brackets to and then I attached the whole mounting plate onto the heater and now I'm going to attach the heater onto the box. So I oriented this part of the bracket onto the box and marked the holes. I drilled the holes and then I'm just going to use fasteners to secure these L brackets that hence the heater. Let's have a look. So once I situated the heater in the location with the hole and I had the brackets attached to the heater, I then just marked where the holes were for the bracket onto the box and then drilled holes for which I put the fasteners to secure the brackets and thereby securing the heater. Heater mounted, it's now time to connect the combustion intake and exhaust tubes, for which, as you can observe, will require 90 degree angles. On the combustion tube provided, the corrugated portion of the pipe can easily bend to a 90 degree angle, but it will not fit on the exhaust tube, nor will it fit on the muffler and the ends of the tube will not be able to be bent to a 90 degree angle. Some people have tried copper fittings and there's even heater specific 90 degree angles that you could purchase online, but I found this stainless steel option very inexpensively on Amazon and I'll include the link in the description section. With this inexpensive fitting, you could connect a 90 degree angle to the exhaust port of the heater and then at any joints, use high temperature silicone to prevent any exhaust leaks. However, there is one problem with this plan. The problem isn't in the orientation of the muffler because as you can see, the weep hole is at the bottom and the muffler is oriented in a vertical direction, so that's okay. The problem is having the muffler in the box with the intention of using the box as a fresh air intake. The muffler is not leak free and will leak carbon monoxide. That's why you should just use the corrugated pipe inside the box with the smooth end exiting the box for which you can connect the muffler on the outside of the box. However, as you can see, I didn't realize this at the time of construction and I joined all of the pieces together with high temperature silicone sealant. So I know all my joints won't leak exhaust, but unfortunately the muffler will. So I had to reconfigure the box and bring all my fresh air intakes to the outside of the box, as I will show you shortly. 
The exhaust pipe exits the box through a flange, which is actually a stainless steel closet bar hanger. Other than the faux pas of including the muffler in the box, which changes my plans for the air intakes, it was a pretty clean install. But while we have access to the back of the box, let's now install our fuel system. Our pre-measured holes for the fasteners and the fuel nipple allow us to install the tank easily. The heater's bracket screws are low profile and won't interfere with the tank given it has some raised attach points. The holes in the back of the box are sealed with silicone before the tank is attached. And there you go, with the tank attached, we're now ready to attach our fuel lines, fuel filter, and fuel pump. In essence, there are four places to which you have to join the fuel lines. There's the fuel tank, there's two places at the fuel filter, there's two places at the fuel pump, and then back to the fuel inlet of the heater. We'll use the filter as an example to demonstrate how you connect the fuel line to the different elements. The fuel line and the fuel filter have to touch each other. They are inserted into the rubber tube so that they connect and are touching each other in the tube. You do not want to have a gap between the elements because if you do, an air pocket will form there and that will mess with the fuel dosing level and cause some fuel problems and smoke problems. Once they're connected in that rubber tube touching each other, you simply tighten the hose clamps and you should have no leaks in your seals. Here's what it looks like on the filter now. So just to quickly summarize the fuel system, the fuel comes out of the fuel tank and connects to the fuel filter. The fuel filter has a little bracket holding it to the back of the box. Then the fuel filter is connected to the fuel pump. The fuel pump is held in place by two brackets at the top of the box. And then from there the fuel line simply goes down back to the bottom of the heater and connects to the fuel intake. Now you may find instructions that state that the fuel pump must be above the fuel tank. I looked into it and the pump is designed to withstand a head pressure of one meter. So as long as the fuel pump is even at the same level of the tank, you should be fine and not have any leaks. But if you wanted to be careful, you could always install a fuel shutoff valve in the box to shut off the pressure of the fuel so there won't be any leaks when not in use. Also, the angle at which you install your pump is important. It should not be horizontal. It should be at least over 15 degrees. 15 to 35 is what the manual recommends, but technically it could even go as far as being vertical and you should be okay, as long as it's not horizontal because in that situation, your fuel pump will develop an air pocket and then you'll have fuel dosing issues and a lot of smoking happening for your heater. And now I'm just showing how I originally intended to have the fresh air intake in the box itself. But as I alluded to the muffler issue, I've had to come up with this adaptation. Since I couldn't trust that the air in the box would be free from carbon monoxide due to the muffler not being airtight, I had to bring the air intakes to the outside of the box instead of using the air in the box. I still intend to put the two vents on the front of the box, one on the bottom and one on the top. That'll help keep the box cool, so the combustion cold air intake as well as the cold air inlet will draw their air from the outside. Connecting the electrical. As you can see, there's a mess of wires that comes with the system, but we'll make sense of it quickly. You can see there's the plug going into the heater unit itself that powers the fan and the control board. And then here I've organized the electrical into three groups the main power plug, then you can see to the top left the fuel filter plug and there's where it plugs into the fuel filter. And then you have the black and red wires that connect to your power source. In my case, it will be a cigarette lighter plugged into the Jackery. And 
then there's another wire that goes to your control unit. So it's quite simple once you gather up all the wires and depending on your application you may want to splice them and make them a little shorter or you could possibly need it to be longer depending on your application. Alright, let's put some diesel in the thing and test drive it. Everything must have gone pretty well with the installation because the unit fired up on the first try. I haven't put the front vents on yet because they haven't arrived yet so after I got this unit fired up I opened up the case a little bit so it could have some ventilation for cooling. And I haven't got the quick connects for the ductwork so they're just held in place by some clamps. I used the corrugated pipe that came with the unit to extend the exhaust away from the unit a little bit but my intention is to use the 4 inch ductwork to carry out the exhaust fumes a little further. The inside of the Jeep was t-shirt weather warm. It was beautiful, nice and comfortable inside the Jeep. A few more hours of testing and I am going to be ready to take this thing on a nice winter camping adventure. And you could be part of it, so subscribe, click the alert bell, and you'll be notified when the videos come out. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. Cool, that was quite a lot of work. <laughs> well, there it is. I cracked it open because I haven't got the vents installed yet, but it is operating. I'm just gonna test run it to see if there's any leaks and just let everything burn off before I'm actually gonna sleep in the Jeep with the heater running. Now, just because the combustion chamber and everything is outside the vehicle, it doesn't mean that there might not be a seal leak or something like that happening that could cause carbon dioxide to blow into the Jeep. So that's why I recommend that you make sure you have a carbon monoxide alarm so that you can be safe. The other thing, I'm not interested in recycling the air, like recovering the air from inside the vehicle and bringing it back into the air intake of the heater. I just want the fresh, warm air to blow through the Jeep and all the excess air will just find its way out through past the seals. The nice thing about that is there won't be any buildup of moisture. And if there is some kind of leak of some sort, it won't be building up in the Jeep because it's always being exchanged but I still recommend that you get a carbon monoxide alarm in your Jeep just to be safe. Now, would I do this again? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You could buy the all-in-one units that they sell for almost the same money. Thing is, you wanna make sure that they have everything they're supposed to have. Like I saw one video didn't come with a fuel filter. Those units, the exhaust and intake for the combustion are immediately below the unit and they're meant to be put in a van or a shed where you can go through the floor. So if you're going to use an application like this, you'd still have to configure something for the combustion intake and exhaust. But that's minor and you could uh, rig up something for that. This was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun. Um, I'm probably after having done this, going to end up getting the DeWalt box that you see up here in the image and redo it and make it fit in that box. I'll have more room. I'll be able to uh, take the muffler out of the box and I'll end up having room to house all the tubes as well. But I'm not going to have a channel on diesel heaters because I want to get camping. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, remember to subscribe and click the alert bell so you'll be notified when those videos come out. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. Glad you could join us. In next week's episode, we're going to start talking a little bit more about some winter camping ideas. Until then, be well, stay safe, take care.